Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk through yet another scenario where I can take a visualization that I had from a client where they wanted to be able to compare two values as part of a total, but then also compare both of those collectively and the ratio between them to an actual target value. Now in front of us here is essentially what we started out with uh, as far as the data and the visualization went, and we wanted a better way to visualize this. Now what we can end up with and an improvement of that can be something like this, where we can show using a combination of a stacked column chart and some clever uses of actually the line combo with even the error bars in there to give a better representation of what their target and actual variances were as far as those ratios went. So we'll walk through all of the processes inside of Power BI to go from start to finish with this. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'll start by walking through the end result and then show us how to build this step by step. So in front of us, we have essentially a couple of values that are in here. So we are using a stacked column chart specifically with a line chart combo. So that is the line and stacked column chart. And what we have are two values. There is on the Y axis, the build and unbuild percentage, basically just the amount in here that collectively was either build or unbuild and what the ratio was. So in this case, Aaron Burke had 100% build and he also had a target to be able to build at 25%. So he is 75% above his target. Now, similarly, Michael Myers, and obviously all of these are fictionalized names, but Michael Myers had a build amount of 91% with the actual total values shown there for the amounts, but his target in this case was 60%. And what this is actually sorting on as well is it's not just what their build or unbuild percentage is, but it's actually being sorted off of the variance to their target. So the people with the highest variances, regardless of whatever their raw values are or whatever their actual build percentage was, he had the greatest amount above the variance. So you can see there's a variance above 75%. In this one, it's 31, 23. So it goes down the list from there via the sort option that was over into here. This is the final result that I think much better displays the performance in this case of these people and their build to unbuild amounts. And I wanna walk through now how to actually create all of this. Technically what we have in here is a line chart, but notice that it kind of looks like an error bar, but with correct labeling. So we'll come over to the start and kind of walk through how to build this. So base amount of a chart here that we have, but this is a clustered column chart. So a few things that we can do to start improving this. First, instead of a clustered, we can stack that to make the values a little bit more represented here. And we can take this one step further. I don't actually need the raw values, which are just the regular amounts. I need to normalize this. So what I'm actually gonna do, so it actually can compare correctly to the percentage on the line as well, is I'm gonna change the amount built and unbuilt in here to the percentages. So build percentage, and move these two down to the actual tooltips. And then I'll get the unbuild percentage in here as well. There we go. So getting closer. And what I'll do is go ahead and keep the columns for unbuild. I will make that maybe a gray color just to de-emphasize it just a little bit. But now we're starting to get a bit closer. Um, but a few things we wanna do to unclutter it. I'm gonna go to my data labels. I'm gonna turn off for build and unbuild. I don't actually need the labels in the columns here at the moment. And with the line chart, I'm actually gonna turn that off for the, the target. So I would like to have something a little bit closer to this where their actual build percentage in here is on the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna do with the tooltips and the data labels. So coming over to here to the build, let's actually keep this one on. And then I'm gonna do a couple of things. So column position, I'm gonna choose that to go to inside base. And depending on how big your chart is, we can either keep it horizontal with background, or if you have a smaller visual, you can actually flip that into, if I go into here and make this layout on all of them, position. All right, here we go. And I want to turn it to vertical. There we go. Okay, so it will allow the visualization to get a little bit smaller if we need to do it for that. Now I can go even further on this. And for this line chart, what I can do is I can actually turn this into a bunch of um, hash marks for this to be able to have those closer to the little marks that you see here. Now, the reason I'm using a line chart instead of error bars, if I come over to here, 
the error bars right now can actually only be placed on the target percentage. So it can only be placed on the line, not the column bars. Another issue that we have for this a little bit is the fact that um, with this scenario that we have in front of us here, as of today in September 2024, the error bars don't have custom labeling yet. So you would have the word upper or lower. So that's why I want to use a combination of lines plus the error bars to work between the two of them. So from the line chart, I'm going to go and change the line to be off. I'm going to go to markers, turn that on. And then in this case, I have it already preset to 12 from the other visual that I reverse engineered. But normally this would be maybe like a two or three. It would be something really small. So just make this big enough that it creates the little tick mark that you want to. So we're getting closer. Now it shows the threshold of where we need to compare to. But we can now then combine this with the error bar, turn that on, and this is the target. So the target is being compared to the build amount. So take build percentage, drag it to the upper, and we can format this a little bit. So one, again, I don't want the word upper to show up on any of these. Like if I hover against this, I have the label of upper. Again, we cannot change that label. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the tooltip entirely. And I'm gonna turn off the marker. The only thing that I want actually is the bar. I'm gonna make that the same color red. I personally don't need the border. So turn that off there. Maybe make this like a width of two. There we go. So whatever width works for you. But now we can see that attached where it's connected to these values in here. And it's letting us get a good comparison between the two of them. So it helps us to identify the total amount per employee, but then also that relationship between the build amount and this. So it doesn't in any way look like a line chart, but we get the proper labeling because the only label that shows up is coming from the actual line value, not the error bar, which again, these labels unfortunately just don't have any, um, sorry, the tooltip I mean, these don't have any ways to change the word for upper yet. It will be coming at some point down the, uh, down the road, but for now, this is a good solution that provides kind of the best of both worlds. But all of that collectively goes towards a visual that I would say works a lot better to actually represent some ra base ratio that you're trying to compare to, and then also allowing us to then have a variance comparison of that by combining a line and an error bar um, line that connects the two of them to show that distinct relationship, specifically from target to the build percentage in this case. But as always, uh, it's a solution that worked very well for a client. It was a big upgrade for them. I always want to hear what you have to think about this. So drop some notes in the comment below uh, section. Any questions as well for future videos or suggestions, I'm always happy to hear. And then as always, check out some of my content here in the upper left. And don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe to continue to help the channel grow. And I will see you all in my next video.